everyone. Welcome to Black Gems Unearthed. My name is Jazz and I'm studying Black History of Massachusetts. Today I'm standing in the north end of Boston at North Square to talk about the smallpox epidemic of 1721 and how a black man named Onesimus helped to treat the disease. I may also be here because I really want some Italian pastries, but first we shall study our black history. Onesimus was from Africa, and he was enslaved to Cotton Mathers, who was a prominent Puritan minister that's known today for his scientific studies, his literature, and his involvement with the Salem Witch Trials, which is an interesting topic for another day. Mathers preached at the Second Church of Boston that was founded in 1649, and that church's first meeting house was in close proximity to this North Square. The church in December of 1706 gave Onesimus to Mathers as a gift. We can tell from Mathers' journal entry that he was quite happy by this surprise. We don't know how Onesimus felt to be enslaved here. We don't know where he came from in Africa. We don't know his original name. The only details that we know about Onesimus comes from Mathers' journal. So how could it be that a person enslaved helped with treating the smallpox disease? Well, actually, before we even talk about that, we should talk about how the epidemic started here in Boston. It was April of 1721 when a ship coming up from the West Indies had a sailor on board that had symptoms of the smallpox disease. They were placed into quarantine, like how we're quarantining people today with COVID to prevent the spread. But unfortunately, there are other crew members on board that fell ill and they spread it throughout the colony. With the population of 11,000 people, there were 6,000 that fell ill between 1721 and 1722. The disease was very contagious. I find it interesting that the disease and the epidemic started from the Boston Harbor, where our big outbreak of COVID-19 also came close to the Boston Harbor from a hotel that had a large conference. Not related, but it kind of feels like history is echoing right now. Now the smallpox symptoms included a rash that would turn into sores and flu-like symptoms. And the CDC says that it was transmitted from droplets from the nose and the mouth of an infected person, in addition from their sores. Now, before the pandemic of 1721, Mathers had a conversation with Onesimus asking him if he ever had the smallpox. And, oh, these pigeons are wild out here. So Onesimus told Mathers that yes and no, he had the smallpox. He said that he had an operation where he got a little bit of the smallpox so that he'd be forever preserved from it. And that he felt a little sick, but then he never had it again. Onesimus was describing the process of inoculation, which is where a person that's healthy, their skin is cut open and a bit of the live virus is placed inside of the cut so that they will become immune to the disease from getting that bit of exposure. Mathers believed Onesimus. He thought he was a smart fella. And he also talked to other Africans in the colony and found out that they all had the same story. This led Mathers to go about the colony recommending that they try inoculation. There was one doctor that was willing to try it out. His name was Dr. Zabdil Boylston, and he tried inoculation on his son and two of his enslaved Africans. Fortunately, the inoculation did go successfully, but that does not mean the public was very keen to try it. In fact, they were actually rather hostile. There was one occasion where a person threw a bomb through Mather's window and had a note on it that said, Cotton Mathers, you dog, damn you. I'll inoculate you with this, a pox to you. Oof, talk about aggressive. And Dr. Boylston wasn't safe either. Someone threw a grenade through his window, but fortunately the fuse fell off before it could explode. People were kind of wild in the 1720s, although, I don't know, are people less wild now? I won't get into it. Um, the reason why people were so against inoculation, there were a few. 
One was that they thought that the enslaved Africans were plotting to kill them. They thought inoculation was a way for them to get the disease and then the Africans would overthrow them. They also thought that the Africans weren't intelligent enough to come up with a medical solution to the smallpox. They didn't have the gifts of enlightenment. And they also were skeptical for religious reasons. The Puritans thought it was the divine will of God that this epidemic happened and that they all needed to repent. Ah, oh, those Puritans. <laughs> Aside from the general public, there was a doctor that was against Boylston and Mather's approach to the smallpox, a gentleman, uh, Dr. William Douglas. He didn't believe in these African folklore of inoculation. And he also was concerned that if they weren't strategic using inoculation, that it could quicken the spread. Fortunately, it did not appear to quicken the spread. Mathers and Boylston did some data collection on the inoculation they did, and they found that out of the people that were inoculated versus getting the disease naturally, less died. The mortality rate was smaller. They found that 2% of people that received the inoculation died versus 14% that died who naturally fell ill to the smallpox disease. Thanks to Onesimus sharing his experience with inoculation, the colony was able to eventually try it on its citizens and reduce the amount of smallpox cases. It's interesting to look back on this history with the smallpox and see how our knowledge and experience influences what we do today with COVID-19 and other diseases. And if you're freaking out about this talk about smallpox, don't worry. As of 1980, the disease has been eradicated. I guess I could have started with that, but eh, it was more fun to do it this way. So you can find details and sources that I pulled information from today down in the description. I think I am gonna go find some Italian pastries now. Thanks for listening to Black Gems Unearthed. Hey, I see you guys stuck around for my shenanigans. I'm gonna get some pastries from Modern Pastry behind me. So I prefer Moderns to Mike's, yeah, I said it. So I'll let you know what I get from inside. Check these cannolis out. So good. That's enough shenanigans. See you all next time at Black Gems Unearthed.